Okay, so the first step in the BLT, the bilinear transformation uh, method uh, to, con to, to design an IR filter is the first thing that we do is to map the digital frequency into analog frequency. The second step is create an analog filter uh, using the low pass prototype. And the third step is conversion of that analog filter into digital filter. So we have covered number two and number three. This is number one. So how are we going to convert the, the given digital frequency, the digital specs of the filter into the um, corresponding um, specs for the analog filter? So uh, we discussed this, how to uh, map S point, play, uh, points in the S plane into points in the Z plane. Now we are looking for the frequencies in the analog domain mapped into the digital domain, or in this case, vice versa digital frequencies mapped into analog frequencies. So if you have a cutoff frequency in the digital domain, let's say one kilohertz, and then you can you convert that one kilohertz into the uh, angular frequency, cutoff angular frequency in the Z domain, in the digital domain, you're gonna get, let's say, omega D. Omega D represent, let's say, uh, an important frequency, cutoff frequency or center frequency, whatever, in the digital domain. That omega D is gonna be located on the unit circle. And this frequency is going to be mapped on the J omega axis omega. Corresponding frequency is going to be called, or we are calling it omega A, that is the analog important frequency. I'm just going to call it important frequency. That's going to, that can be cutoff frequency or any other frequency, right? So, <clears throat> again, the, the, the BLT, the transformation is, is important. We are still using these right here. We are still using these equations, right? In this case, we're going to be using this equation, uh, going from Z domain to S domain. So we're going to be using this equation. Okay, so let's look at it. S is J omega A, right? It's mapped on J omega axis. And the corresponding point on, in the Z plane is omega d, or e to the power j omega t. Do you remember when we, uh, when we do the frequency response from h of z, remember, we substitute z is equal to e to the power um, j omega t s, right? e to the power j omega t s, and then we take omega t s, of course, is equal to omega. So, <laughs> what we are going to do, this omega is going to be omega d. That is the frequency that is given to you in the digital domain. And we want to map it in the analog domain, in the Laplace domain. So, z is equal to e to the power j omega d, t, t is t s, will be mapped, omega d will be mapped in the and log plane. So we're going to use S is equal to 2 over Ts, Z minus 1 over Z plus 1. We're going to use that equation and substitute S is equal to J omega A and then Z is equal to e to the power J omega D T or J omega D T S, whatever you want to call it. And then we know omega D that is given to us. We know T given to us. So we are going to plug those values in, and we're going to substitute it. Actually, first we're going to go ahead and simplify it. So we simplified it, and we created, we derived a relationship between omega A and omega D. So if you're calculating the corresponding omega A, you know omega D, you know T, you're going to use equation 8.11. And if you're going back, if you know omega A and you want to calculate omega D, then you're going to use equation 8.12. If we plot 8.12 over here, that is we keep omega D on the y-axis and we are changing omega A on the x-axis, this is the graph that we are going to get. It's a graph we are going to get. <coughs> Remember, omega S is a sampling frequency. 
remember in the digital domain omega d goes from what 0 to omega s by 2 right omega s by 2 all the frequencies you can observe in the digital domain from 0 to half of the sampling frequency or the folding frequency. So, in the digital domain omega d goes from 0 to omega s by 2. So, when we are when we um, when we go from in the digital domain when we go from 0 y axis is you know omega d to omega s by 2 uh, and, and we plot it by changing omega a then this is the curve that we are going to get. Now, observe initially this curve is approximately linear you know it is still at 0 0.32 omega s you have 0.25, but then it start becoming nonlinear and then it starts saturating and of course, it is going to saturate because you cannot have in the digital domain you cannot have value greater than um, all the frequencies uh, can come in um, you know half of the cutoff frequency uh, half of the sampling frequency. So, 0 0.5 omega s. Now, this is called frequency warping right here when it becomes start becoming non-linear when as long as it is linear we can see that you know approximately the digital frequency is going to be the same as the analog frequency, but if your analog frequency is you know large frequency then you have the non-linear relationship that is your digital frequency and analog frequency will not be equal to each other and that is called frequency warping. So, what we are going to do? We are going to the step number one is using frequency warping to convert the given digital frequency into equivalent analog ones. So, we are going to use this equation right here. Omega d is given to us, digital frequency, T s is given to us. We are going to use those values and find the equivalent value of omega a and that is called frequency warping right that is step number 1. Once we have the value of omega a that is the analog frequency we are going to use the analog low pass filter prototype to design the analog low pass high pass band pass band stop filters based on our requirement and we are going to get h of s. Once we have h of s then we are going to apply the BLT transformation and we are going to go from h of s to h of c using the blt transformation or the conversion of h of uh, from s to z what we saw right over here right so we're going to go from s domain to z domain by using this equation wherever there is s we're going to plug the s is equal to 2 over t s z, z minus 1 z plus 1 and we are going to get h of z and once we have h of z then we are going to substitute z is equal to e to the power j omega and where cap omega where cap omega of course, is the, the normalized frequency and we are going to plot the magnitude response of the filter and the frequency response of the filter. So, these are our three steps and that is how we are going to do it. So, let us look at one of the examples there I think I put two examples here let us look at one of the examples. So, we have the normalized low pass filter with cutoff frequency of 1 radian per second you know given to us this is use the given HPS and the BLT to design the corresponding IR filter with the cutoff frequency of 15 hertz and sampling rate of 90 hertz. So, uh, we are given f of s from which we can find t of s which is 1 over 90 right in seconds and we are given f of uh, cutoff frequency so we can f of c and from that we are going to find omega c this is the, the digital frequency right. So, I am going to call it omega d f d we are going to find omega d which will be equal to so this is colon not equal uh, omega d which will be equal to 2 pi f of d. So, I am going to find first radian per second what is the cutoff frequency in radian per second for the digital circuit or digital filter we are going to find what is the sampling frequency. So, once we have the digital specs we are going to go ahead and use frequency, frequency warping and we are going to calculate the corresponding omega a value that is the cutoff frequency in for the analog filter using the equation that we discussed above. So, 2 over T s tangent of omega d T s over 2 calculate that omega a is going to come out to be 103.92 radian per second. 
So we're going to take this 103.92, we're going to go to the second step. We're going to use the analog filter prototype that is 1 over 1 plus s over omega c cutoff frequency. In this case, we're calling it omega a, which is 103.92. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to design that h of s. That's the response of our analog equivalent filter. And once we have the analog equivalent filter, we're going to apply step number three, that is BLT transformation, bilinear transformation. And we are going to substitute S equals two over T, Z minus one over Z plus one. T, of course, is given to us as, or we calculated that as one over 90. And we're gonna go ahead and plug that in, simplify this, you know, go over simplification, simplify this. And finally, we are going to get H of C, this. And again, we don't want in the numerator anything to be multiplied by C. So we're going to go ahead and divide both numerator and denominator by 1.5773 Z. And we can write the filter, function of the filter down in a standard form, which is this. And from that, we can write down the difference equation of the filter y n minus 0 0.2679 y sub n minus 1 equals 0 0.366 x of n plus 0 0.366 x of n minus 1. So that will be the difference equation of the filter. Now, when you are, remember, when you are plotting the response of the filter, you know, you don't really have to do anything like that. Remember that because all you need is H of Z, the raw form of H of Z. And what you have to do, you have to go and plug Z is equal to E to the power J omega, where omega goes from 0 to what? Pi, right? And of course, divide the interval into 100 points, 200 points, whatever you want. <coughs> So you're going to go ahead and plug that in. You're going to get H of E J omega, whether you want to plug this in over here, you want to plug this in over here. I, you know, it doesn't matter. For MATLAB, it doesn't matter. For us, it does, but for MATLAB, it doesn't matter. So when you have H of E J omega calculated all the points already in MATLAB, all you have to do is take the absolute value of that to calculate the magnitude response, apply the angle function to calculate the angle phase response, and plot it versus omega from 0 to pi or plotted versus f from 0 to fs by 2. I would say plotted from for f because that's what I'm going to ask you in, uh, in the exam. Uh, because of, again, we are looking, uh, we are interested in the frequency domain in hertz, right? We are not interested in uh, omega from 0 to pi. So plot it against frequency domain. Okay, and this is the response right here. So that's your low-pass filter digital using IR method, uh, BLT method to design an IR filter and test a phase response. All right, and there is another example 8.6 that actually I did in the class uh, a few semesters ago, and it was, it's a very good, uh, you know, example. So I just grabbed my class notes and I captured this with, uh, on, you know, with the, uh, what you call, forgot the name of that, uh, that we have in, in, in the classroom to capture whatever I'm writing on the board. Uh, E-beam, sorry, yeah, E-beam. So I captured this with E-beam and then um, I posted these notes, notes during that semester. And then for you, I have just taken out my stuff and made example 8.6 in which we are designing a band pass IR filter. Um, and the low cutoff frequency is five kilohertz, high cutoff frequency is six kilohertz, Sampling frequency is 30 kilohertz. So first, as you can see, we have, you know, we convert that into omega L. Oh, first we're gonna do the you know, pre-warping, um, calculate omega A. Omega A is the cutoff frequency. So you're gonna cal calculate the lower cutoff frequency and upper cutoff frequency using uh, frequency warping, pre-warping. Uh, once you have the analog values of those, so remember digital values were what? Five kilohertz and six kilohertz. And analog values, uh, and of course, 
and you can you can convert it into uh, radian per second, but analog value in radian per second are these. Uh, and then you go ahead and calculate the center frequency and the bandwidth in the analog domain. Then you use the low pass filter prototype and design the filter. And I'm going to just leave it uh, for you to go through it. Uh, we design the low pass filter and then we apply the BLT method. And simplify it and then finally we're going to get our H of C right here. Right. And observe, I'm not solving this, right? I'm not solving this because my, uh, you know, I'm, I was only going to plot the magnitude and the phase response. So I don't really need to divide the numerator and denominator by 6.27. Yes, but if I ask you to give me the transfer function, uh, uh, sorry, the give me the uh, difference equation, sorry. If I ask you to give me the difference equation or the standard form of transfer function, then of course you're going to divide it. And then you're going to show one coefficient with the highest power of z in the denominator so that when you write the difference equation, you don't have anything associated with y of n. You don't have 6.27 associated with y of n. Okay? I'm not doing that because I'm just plotting the response. So you know, I didn't bother to convert that. All right, guys. So this is the end of chapter number eight, what we have to discuss. Um, and this is pretty straightforward, actually. This method is pretty straightforward, uh, standard steps. So I hope you will understand it. And, um, you know, you work on that, and then it's, it's very easy. Um, as the uh, FIR filter were also pretty straightforward. So I don't see any problem with either of these techniques.